Hello everybody, Jandag Techviews here, and today I'm gonna be doing something stupid basically. So I have three or two dead graphics cards, which is this V3750 and this 9800 GTX Plus, and today I'm gonna be ripping this heatsink off and replacing it with those graphics card heatsinks. I'm not sure if anyone's done this before, but you know what, I figured I might as well. The first thing I need to do is just get a baseline reading for the CPU cooler to see when it's under constant utilization for a long period of time, how high do the temperatures get? So to do this, I'm running burn and test 10.1. This will stress the CPU, and the current test config file I'm using is to maximize the CPU temperature. The i3-4130 is a dual-core CPU with hyper-threading, and it's been sitting at about 32 watts for a couple minutes, and the peak temperatures are not bad at all, with only 54 degrees Celsius being the max. While this is running so we can see the maximum temperature, I'm gonna go remove some GPU heatsinks. The first graphics card whose cooler I'm gonna rip off is this 9800 GT. Plus. If you're an old enough fan of the channel, you'll know that I once did a video on this card, and that this card once was in a working condition. However, I killed it. Okay, and with that, I took the heatsink off. I think my plan currently is to just plop it down and see what happens, and I hope it's gonna fit. I'm not sure how the fan situation is gonna work, but I'll figure something out. The next GPU whose heatsink I'll be ripping off is the V3750. This week's video was supposed to be about this graphics card, but long story short, I thought the card worked, but realistically it didn't. It actually had a missing capacitor on the back, but was still able to output a video somehow. I don't know, but we're gonna be repurposing the heatsink for now. Okay, and there's our second heatsink. It's copper mainly, unlike the aluminum other one, but I'm not sure how this is gonna fit on the CPU either. This is gonna be an interesting video. The last card whose heatsink I have yet to rip off is this. I believe it was the 7500 LE. Yeah, and just like that, it's already off. So we have our three graphics cards heatsinks. We have this one, this one, and that one. The next step is to actually remove the cooler. I guess that'll come out like just like that. Ah, uh, now I have to unscrew this and somehow jerry-rig these on. Okay, and that's it. There's our, that, wow, I put a lot of thermal paste on there last time. So, unfortunately, I couldn't fit on the other heat sink, so I'm gonna be, um, trying this little heat sink first. And yes, I did just put one fan header on top of the CPU fan header. I just kind of jammed it on. Um, we're just gonna, yeah. There we... Looks good to me. I'm kind of scared to plug this in. All right, the computer is on and I have good news. The fan is spinning, so I did put it on the correct leads. Probably. Hopefully it's not cooking itself right now, because I can't exa- Oh, it's hard to- Ooh. Oh, remember how the previous maximum temperature was 58 degrees Celsius while under load? Well, it's currently at idle, and it's currently hitting a maximum of 69 degrees Celsius. Wow, we are already at 79 degrees Celsius. Oh, we're at 80 degrees Celsius. It's been, it's not even been a minute. You know, interestingly enough, it's using more wattage this run than it was with the previous run, even though this run, it is getting a hell of a lot hotter. Oh, let's go, 100 degrees, baby. You know, and it's not even moving that much air. Like, it's not warm, it's not cold. It's just sitting there spinning air in circles. You know what, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you shouldn't use a GPU heatsink this tiny on an i3-4130. But regardless, it seems to have plateaued at about 100 degrees Celsius, so eh, I'll take it as a win. The next cooler I'm gonna be using is this. It's a crappy plastic, well, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's pretty useless. It's from an HD6350. With this next godforsaken piece of crap, it might not even be metal, it's a really bad heatsink. Uh, I just duct taped it down because it kept moving due to the thermal paste, it kept sliding in it. I put a copious amount on there. Hey, the fan's spinning, I put it on the right leads. So, at idle, with this really tiny heatsink, we're hitting 44 degrees Celsius, which I think is actually better than the other heatsink. I did put on a bit more thermal paste, but I'm not sure how this next test is gonna go. So, here goes nothing. Okay, so we're 15 seconds in, and we already jumped about 12, 15, you know what, nearly 20 degrees. We're currently running at the maximum boost frequency at 100% utilization at 33 watts, and steadily climbing still. I do not do something to people. So we're up to 94 degrees Celsius right now, still running at the maximum boost frequency. And honestly, surprisingly enough, we're only losing like one or 200 megahertz. Sometimes not even, we did lose 300 right there, but we're sitting at 100 degrees Celsius.
Okay, and if you just heard that fan, that's the fan ramping down because we just finished the benchmark. The maximum temperature this time was only 100 degrees Celsius. Is that good? No, this is horrible for your processor. Don't do this, this is stupid. Anyway, I have an even worse heatsink I'm gonna test now. So, although that test did not get the best temperatures, I do have good news. It seems like the duct tape I used to hold down the CPU cooler hasn't uh, melted, so that's fantastic. I looked hard throughout my entire GPU collection that I have with me, and this is the worst cooler I have. A passively cooled 72, 7300 LE. I'm gonna plop it on there, and Lord forgive me what happens next. I'm assuming that this heat sink is made out of aluminum. It's very light, it has a cheap feel, and it's pretty clearly a crappy passively cooled heat sink. I feel bad for this i3. You know, even though I've been very generous with the thermal paste so far, I think I'm just gonna, yeah. Here we go, let's take that, put that over there, and then I'll put it like this. Yeah, there we, there we go, that's how you install a CPU heatsink, everybody. For the record, this is genuinely the worst environment possible for this test. There is no airflow here, there is no fans whatsoever, it is just a chunk of crappy aluminum directly on a processor. Let's see what happens. Hey, does that look familiar? Oh, I'm surprised this thing's even booting at this point. So, at idle, we're hitting 56 degrees Celsius, which really isn't good, and I just started the benchmark. And after a few seconds, we're already- oh my god, look at how fast that is climbing. We're gonna be hitting 100 degrees Celsius in no time flat. I think this is a condition where I'm definitely gonna have to rip out the power cord. Okay, we're at 98, 99, 100 degrees Celsius at 29 seconds in. We are thermal throttling, we're down hundreds of megahertz. We're currently running at 100 degrees Celsius. So it seems that it's under, oh my God, it's, 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 oh, it's nearly a gigahertz underclocked right now. You know, interestingly enough, it does seem to be spinning up fans from other system components. I believe the PSU fan is actually running a lot louder now. Guys, I have bad news. It's not, oh my God, is this thing doing anything? We're currently sitting at 19, we're sitting at 1.9 gigahertz on the core right now at 21 watts at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're still at 100 degrees Celsius for the maximum temperature. We're down to 17.6 watts and we're down to 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 gigahertz on the core. This i3 is in a world of hurt right now. All right, and with that last test, I guess technically we passed. The maximum CPU temp we saw was 100 degrees Celsius, and the lowest wattage we saw was 3.51 watts at 798 megahertz. Wow. So this is the heatsink from the earlier V3750, and the fan doesn't seem to be spinning, unlike it was on the other heatsinks. It also doesn't fit too well on the processor. I don't think it's making 100% coverage. Okay, already, before I've even started the benchmark, we've seen a maximum CPU temperature of 68 degrees Celsius. Clearly, this is not ideal, and this heatsink is not making good a connection with this CPU. And on top of that, with the fan mask spinning, I don't think this next test is gonna go so well. But, here goes nothing, I guess. After not even 20 seconds, we're all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius, and we're already thermal throttling. We're down to 29, 30 watts at 2.7, 2.6 gigahertz. So I've been running the test for about a minute and a half now. The, as expected, is thermal throttling, the wattage is getting lower, and the temps are maintaining at 100 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's, oh wow, that is really, I mean, what do you expect at 100 degrees Celsius? It is very warm right now, but it is transferring heat better than I thought it would. And with that test finishing up, we hit a maximum of 100 Celsius on both cores, a maximum load wattage of 37 watts, 100% utilization, and 800 megahertz on the core. For this next test, I had to get a bit creative. What you're seeing on the CPU currently is the cooling pads from the VRAM and just all around this 9800 GTX Plus heatsink. I basically put down a layer of thermal paste, a layer of cooling pads, and then a little bit more thermal paste. Given the sheer size of this heatsink and the location of the CPU fan header, I can't exactly plug in the graphics card fan. However, it seems that this one has the same fan setup as the V3750 did. And when I plugged in this one, it wasn't spinning the fan. So I'm not sure this one would even work regardless. Either way, it's time to turn the system on. 
Why is this thing still working? <laughs> this is, it has undergone so much abuse, yet it still works. All right, so far so good, and I actually mean it. At idle, we're sitting at only 62 degrees Celsius, which isn't bad at all, considering that we are barely touching the CPU and the fan is not spinning. Uh, you know what? I take back what I say about this being promising. We're already at 100 degrees Celsius, 23 seconds into the test. All right, and with this test, with this heatsink coming to an end, the results are looking pretty similar and just as bad as the previous one. Once again, we hit a maximum of 100 degrees Celsius on both cores, a maximum wattage of 37 watts, and a maximum boost clock of 3.4 gigahertz. We also hit a minimum clock speed of 798 megahertz, just as before. So, moral of the story, should you do this? No. I cannot, this is, this, no, do not, <laughs> do not do this, please. If you like the video, then, well, leave a like or subscribe or comment or do anything. I mean, the more you interact with the video, the more YouTube promotes it. So, hey, do me a favor and do all four or three. What did I say? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it. And have a great day. Bye.